my time with him ended up getting cut short. And those six months, I would pay any price to have those six months back with him mm. just to get six months more one-on-ones with him. Like, I just feel like our friendship would have taken a whole new level. His maturity in the Lord would have gone to a whole new level. You know, so I learned a valuable lesson. Like when the Lord prompts, I need faith and I need to step out and do it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another week of the Reach More podcast. I am your host, Mari Pablo, and I have a little bit of news for you. Uh, As you know, we've been recording the last 20-something episodes with Dan Boyd, which is a great friend of the EC, and he's been an awesome, awesome co-host. Unfortunately, he's abandoning us. Just kidding. Um, The Lord is calling him to do other things right now, and so I'm very excited Uh, Very sad that he's obviously not our co-host anymore, but excited to see what the Lord's going to do in his life because he's just such a gift and has beautiful ways that the Lord uses him and works through him. But I'm very excited to announce that now your co-hosts are going to be two of your evangelical Catholic consultants. And so our new co-host, he was our guest on the last podcast, and he's been working for the EC for a lot longer than I have. And his name is Josh Dart. So take a minute. Welcome, Josh. So hey, excited Maddie. to do this with you, brother. Thanks, Marty. It's great to be here. I am pumped. How long have you been working for the EC again? Going on eight years, February 1st. Okay. And I'm at two and a half years. So that's a lot longer than me. So. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome to the thanks. team. Thanks. Thanks. It's exciting. It's exciting. And so kind of similar to how we did this the first session, um, one, of the, one of our first episodes, Dan and I were just like, you know, if people are going to be hearing from us, it's probably important for them to get to know us a little bit. If not, we're just these rando people talking to you. Uh, so I kind of wanted to take this time. We learned a little bit about Josh's, about your apostolate in the last episode. Uh, but today I just want to get to know a little bit about who you are. And so just take a moment, if you could just introduce yourself to our listeners, tell us a little bit more about how you grew up and how you encountered the Lord and all that jazz. Oh, I'd love to. Did you say Rando or Rambo? I, I, feel I like said we're Rando. Kind of Ram- okay, yeah. we could be Rambo people too. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit about me. Thanks for asking. So I grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and both my parents got saved kind of in the charismatic renewal of the of the early and mid 70s. My dad actually was um, at a William and Mary University. They'd both been raised Catholic but kind of left the faith by late high school. We're kind of done with it. And um, my dad got saved, as he would say, and uh, began very, living a very intentional life. So intentional that um, he was leaving, leading, living in a men's um, community. And um, my, my the story is my uncle Timmy came to visit and was so moved by the witness of their fellowship and brotherly love for one another that he called my dad and said, said, Andy, I want to move in with you guys. And my dad said, well, Timmy, you got to stop using drugs. Timmy said, oh, all right. And my dad said, you got to stop selling drugs. And he said, how am I going to support my way through college? (laughs) (laughs) But he did. And and so I kind of grew up, and my my mom had a similar but different story right after college. So I grew up with two very intentional parents. We went to mass on Sunday morning, and then we would have some sort of Christian fellowship in the afternoon. Um, uh, my, my parents kind of intentionally moved into a neighborhood in Virginia beach where a couple other parents had decided they wanted to live. And so we kind of joked about it as a little bit of a Christian commune, but it was, it was pretty low income, um, housing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just had a very interesting childhood growing up with some intentional Catholic community around me, very intentional parents, but privy also to some, some gang violence on the streets Mm -hmm. And um, by, I guess, my adolescent years, I kind of realized, you know, I, sh- I can see that the wages of sin are death and I don't, I don't want to die. So it's I guess I'll just together. stay a Christian. It was like imperfect love, right? It wasn't great, but it'll get you there. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to go to hell and I didn't want to end up dead on the streets. So I, I lived at a Christian as a Christian and that, that got me pretty far. But by the time I was 20, I was definitely living with a foot on this firm foundation of the Lord and kind of beginning to do the splits yeah. with a, with a firm foundation in the world. Yeah. Yeah. 
a little bit about my childhood. I've got three younger siblings. About to ask about the siblings. Yeah, yeah. wonderful people. They're spread out throughout the country now, but I've got great siblings. Do you have siblings? I do have two older sisters. Two older. You're the baby of the family. I am the baby of the family, and you're the oldest. This and I'm is the like oldest. this is this bam, is bam. fun. <laughs> this will be fun. Complimentary. Yeah, there it is. There it is. And then when you went to when you were 20, like so, what what was the moment that you decided this split is going to break me, and I just want to follow Jesus? Uh, it's it's an extraordinary moment by God's grace and perfect timing, as His grace always is perfect timing. But I was I was really in a rough spot in my life. I was just just really dining on the pleasures of this world and and kind of pretending I was a Christian. Um, I think I'd been dumped by my third girlfriend in the in a row, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd totaled my Bronco. I think I'd been fired from my job. I was going to going to school locally, and um, I was on my way to a friend's dad's funeral. So it was just a, it was just a bad Saturday morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like a country song. <laughs> and um a young lady had asked me to come to a little prayer meeting Bible study at a at a Protestant church around the corner on the mm -hmm. way to the funeral. And so I stopped in mostly to see her. She never showed up, but I experienced really three things at that Bible study in a powerful way. One, in a moment of grace, I experienced the the weight of my sins, like mm -hmm. really heavy. And in the same moment, I experienced the love of God the Father in a very physical way. I almost felt like I did feel like God came up behind me as a man and just gave me a man hug, mm. grabbed my arms, grabbed my shoulders, just squeezed me. And I just felt the love of God pour over me mm. in a way that I had never experientially felt before. And in that moment, and, and I was weak in the knees. I, I could not stand. I was just overcome by the love of God. Nobody in the else, else in the room was. It was it was only me. When we get to heaven, you can all watch the replay. It's, it'll be pretty <laughs> comical, but but beautiful. And in that moment, I remember telling the Lord, I didn't want to waste my life. And I, I didn't really know what that meant. Uh, kind of naively, I thought, I'll just volunteer and do some youth ministry stuff and mm -hmm. chaperone kids for lock-ins and maybe you know take them to the March for Life yeah. or a Steubenville retreat or something. But the Lord took what I gave him, my volunteer for three years of my life, quote unquote. And he just kept asking a little more, but right when I was ready to give it and mm. stretching me and growing me as a good father does, he saw way more in me than I would have ever seen in myself. Mm -hmm. So it changed, changed the trajectory of my life. Dang. The Lord did. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Cause we talk a lot about in apostolates, like the power of invitation and so this girl just invited you to something. She didn't even go, but like <laughs> she never no, showed but, up. But it's so <laughs> you have no idea what the Lord is going to do through an invitation, and you have no idea if they're going to go or not. But if the Lord wants you somewhere, like we need to do our part and not be afraid to do an invitation. Because I mean, did you ever see this girl again? Uh, I'm sure I did. I don't remember it. I mean, I, I would see her around, but it was definitely one of those cases where I'm not condoning like flirt to revert or flirt. Yeah. To yeah, convert. yeah. No, I, I don't. It was agree. totally my situation. I know. But like, did you ever tell her, Hey, that night was actually really important. And the Lord did something through your invitation. I don't think I ever did. I think you should. Like, <laughs> I think man, I should. come on. Okay, <laughs> two things. One, if the Lord did something, I remember the person that invited me to do the camp in Georgia that changed my life. Afterwards, I told her, like, thank you. Because if it wasn't, I had never heard of this. If it wasn't for her telling me about this, I mean, the Lord would have probably gotten creative and done something else. But he used her to invite me. And I talked to this girl maybe like once every few years. You know what I mean? Okay, so, I'll do it. Okay, good. Next podcast, ask me. Now, I will tell you, so while I was in this little prayer meeting, there was this time of praise, and um, I did not want to praise God. I yeah. was done praising God. But that that scripture called, give it says, give to the Lord a sacrifice of praise was mm. just stuck in my head. And mm. I was like, I am not wanting to be sacrificed today, Lord. So I was giving it to God. Thank you for the girl that dumped me. Thank you. for <laughs> I was just giving it to him. Yeah. Thank you for totaling my Bronco. Oh, Thank you for man. this. And in the course of that, I had my eyes closed and I felt a hand on my chest and I looked down and there was a man in a motorized wheelchair and he had scooted into the room and he had placed his hand on my chest. And all he said was this, as I looked at him, like it was so awkward, like so <laughs> awkward. He said, God will heal your broken heart. 
Okay. Oh, wow. That's all he said. And I looked at it and he couldn't even speak clearly. Like he had, you know, he had some sort of um, physical, he had serious yeah. physical challenges. And I, I heard what he said. I looked at him. I didn't know what to do. Like, do you want me to respond? Yeah. Like I'm sitting here giving it, giving it to the Lord shovel after shovel. Yeah. And he just says that. And then he took his hand off my chest. He, you know, used his little joystick on his wheelchair to motor out of the room. And it was within moments that I felt the crushing weight of my sin and the bountiful life-giving ocean of God's love. Man. And I did go back to the church eventually, weeks later. And I said, this is weird. I was here a couple weeks ago. Is there a guy in a motorized red scooter? <laughs> did you did you say thank you to him? I didn't. They didn't know who I was talking about. I did run into him about a year later, and I went right up to him. But he didn't remember it. No I said, way. You don't remember? I said, I was the guy, and I was at a prayer meeting at this church, and you came and you prayed for me. And he just kind of slow nodded and was just like, good. Wow. Like, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like if you feel the problem of the Holy Spirit, you have no idea what what can happen. So, oh, I, I know. I just awesome. I want to ask him, like, dude, was that hard for you to do yeah. that? Like, I'm not saying yeah. your apostle it needs to be weird or the Lord's calling yeah. us to be weird, maybe unusual, but like that that was a little weird, right? Dang, <laughs> that awesome. guy just coming in and putting his hand on my chest. That's so beautiful. I love that. Yeah, because you encountered good. the Lord. We you shared a little bit about meeting your wife in the previous podcast. And then how did, and you kind of said this, but how did you start working with the EC? Mm. So I was, um, so I had studied engineering in college and, and two years into being a project manager at a firm, I just felt a real cl clear sense in prayer one day that the Lord was inviting me out of that. And um, so the Lord gave me the grace to follow him out of that career into the other. So I'd been doing youth and young adult ministry in Virginia Beach and then eventually moved into doing some campus ministry in Richmond, Virginia. I was at a campus minister's retreat and um, the president of the EC, Jason Simon, was there. And he he actually wasn't giving any presentations or anything, but we ended up having a beer um, across the street from the retreat center. And he just kind of asked me one question. Um, he said, how are you going to reach the darkest corners of your campus? Mm -hmm. And I was like captivated and scared and just, I didn't know what to say. I was like, I, I don't know. I mean, they need to be reached. That's obvious, but I don't know how I'm going to meet them. So that's mm -hmm. what led me to the EC. And I ended up taking a bunch of students at the time to evangelization training camp for a week over the summer. And from there, the tremendous fruitfulness, both in the ministry and also in my personal life, also as a, as a newly married man, I had one kid. Um, it just proved tremendously fruitful. So I've been a big fan of the evangelical Catholic ever since, started working for him several years later, moved to Wisconsin and been here for the last eight years. Mm, that's awesome. So you've been here consulting for like ever. Um, <laughs> what has been, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen and heard a lot about a lot of different apostolates, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to change the question a little bit to in your time as a consultant, what has been the most out of the box apostolate you've ever seen someone do? Oh, uh, campus ministry always has really funny out of the box apostolates. And they always make me roll my eyes a little bit, but common ones will be like a hot tub, small group. And I'm like, <laughs> no, like, it's no, <laughs> you know, so you hear these kind of funny yeah, ones from really funny. well intentioned college students that are yeah. just getting after it, you know, or like mm -hmm. extremely late night, small groups. Like, Hey, we're going to have a men's group. It starts at 1 a.m people are awake oh. anyways, you know, and it's just like, whoa, yeah. you know, <laughs> but, but I've heard of all sorts of fun ones. I, you know, I, I kind of key in on a lot of guys apostolates just cause I'm a guy. So I, mm -hmm. I think it just sticks with me a little more, Yeah. but there's some around working out. There's always some around, you know, bourbon in the Bible mm -hmm. or there's just a lot of highly intentional friendships. Probably mm -hmm. the one though, that just has always stuck out in my mind. This is from a couple of years in a parish because it's so, it just so captured me how intentional this lady was. She had spent, um, she had spent a season in a, in a 12 week training group and she just was, was captivated by the intentionality mm. that she could live her life. And I remember she was like an older lady of, of, of discipline, if you will, went to the same grocery store, same day mm -hmm. of the week, you know, so she would see the same cashier. 
mm-hmm. every day when every every week when she went there. So she just started talking to the cashier. And eventually she said to the cashier one day, I'll see you next week. And the cashier said, No, you won't. I've got I just got diagnosed with cancer. And the lady got her number. She offered to take her to her treatments. And they became good friends. Yeah. And and I know it's just like such a small thing. Yeah, but that's huge. But the intentionality just has just stuck with me. Because I I, you know, that kind of lady inspires me. Like, I want to be that intentional. Mm. Not just with cashiers, but like, I want to be that intentional with my kids. I want to be intentional with my neighbors, Mm. you know? So all all sorts of apostolates, big and small. You know, some people end up leading, um, you could call them like bigger, but kind of typical apostolate. So with, with guys in a men's group or an Exodus 90 group or uh, a women with a walking with purpose group or something, but I, I don't know what the percentage is, but most people, they let the who drive the what. So the Lord will put some people on their heart and then they'll be like, Lord, what do you want me to do about it? Mm. And in my own life, I found that that's the most healthy and fruitful way of discerning my own personal apostolates. I shared mm-hmm. a, about two of them a little bit last yeah. week as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Mm-hmm. And in looking at apostolates that you've been a part of or have consulted, but mostly the ones that you've been a part of or you've led, what has been the one that you just like that bombed or I really should have <laughs> done that better? <laughs> like, uh, I, you know, follow through with apostolates. <laughs> yeah, lesson learned. It's it's always follow through for me. Um and and being courageous. I, I think I come across as a little more like confident than I actually am in my personal apostolates. Mm-hmm. The Lord, the Lord taught me a good lesson early on. He put a guy in my life named Justin. I love Justin. But I saw Justin, I kept feeling like the Lord was like, invite him to meet one on one. And I was just scared. Like yeah. I had not really done that with anyone but college students, you know. Yeah. And it it took me six months before I invited him to meet one on one. Like the Lord just mm-hmm. nagged me in the best kind of way. And when I finally did, it was so fruitful. And my time with him ended up getting cut short. And those six months, I would pay any price to have those six months back with him, mm-hmm. just to get six months more one on ones with him. Like I just feel like our friendship would have taken a whole new level. His maturity in the Lord would have gone to a whole new level. You know, so I learned a valuable lesson. Like when the Lord prompts, I need faith and I need to step out and do it. Another one that bombed really recently was this past fall. I felt like the Lord in the summer had been like, start a book study with your siblings. So I text them all. I'm like, we're going to have a book study. You know, we had one meeting. <laughs> Why is it, or I, one maybe meeting. It's just me. I find it so much harder when it's like family related for me. It's, I don't know. I'm speaking for myself. I feel like, it's like invite your. I remember one time. I think I shared the story before. But the Lord was putting on my heart to inv- like call my cousin and check up on her. Mm. And I was like, Lord, I never call my cousin. Like this is she's a lot older than me. This would be a very weird phone call. But like she was in my dreams. Like the Lord was just like Whoa. really like call your cousin. And I was like, okay, so, Lord. So did you call her? I did, and what she happened? ended up. I mean, I can't share the details, but she was going through a super challenging, very challenging time. And no one in the family knew. Um, And I was the first person that she ended up opening up to. And it was like crazy. I was like, man, Lord, I should really listen to you more often. (laughs) It's like we should expect the Holy Spirit. Yeah. like, And he had been nudging me for like weeks at that point. And I was like, okay. It's like the Holy Spirit knows her mind. The Holy Spirit knows your mind. And you say, Holy Spirit, I'm yours. Why don't we expect when the Holy Spirit puts these ideas in our mind? But it's it's hard. Like he's done that for me with random people in my life. And I'm so much more quick Mm. to call the random people that I haven't spoken to in two years. But my cousin, who I see on a pretty regular basis, it was just like so much more challenging. Yeah. And that's that's something. And this is something that I see with people that we do consulting with, with other consultants as well. It's just like a common theme. I think we need to work on being more bold with our family. I, you know? I, I've often thought about Jesus' relationships with his extended family. Like yeah. James and John, I think, were like distinct cousins of Jesus, yeah. right? John the Baptist. Yeah. And so I think like, man, and then he had these brother sets in there, Andrew mm-hmm. and Peter. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, Jesus like totally entered the danger zone with his yeah. extended family. I mean, Clopas, I think was 
according to tradition, like the 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 brother of his foster father Joseph. It's yeah. so, like he's totally entering the danger zone with his extended family. And so like he's not a stranger to that. And that, yeah. that gives me a lot of confidence, you know? That's beautiful. I love that. Well, I think there's a lot more. We'll be talking about apostolates every single episode. So <laughs> I'm excited to to dive in that, with that. But it's a new year. We're at 2024. Um, I would just love to hear what is like a challenge in your life right now or a blessing in your life and something you're looking forward to in 2024. Ooh, I think, um, like I said, follow through. I think the Lord always is trying to, <clears throat> not trying to, like encouraging me to follow through. So this year, like I told you last time, I feel like the Lord has given me the green light to to continue with my two like side hustle apostolates, the men's group I lead, and then the guy I'm meeting with for one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. But he's also given me a lot of clarity just in my um, family. And I'm trying to be obedient to that. The Lord gave me a really good word um, in November to be obsessed with my family mm -hmm. in all the right ways, in all mm -hmm. the right ways. Right. Mm -hmm. And so just in trying to do that, you know, I'm, I'm taking that to prayer every day. I'm talking about it with my wife, Angela. And um, that, that's my primary vocation, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I do that well, then the Lord will be glorified and um, I'll become a saint. And that's, mm. that's the end goal there. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, I'm middle-aged stability is something you can take for granted or you can hate, or you can love. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leverage it for the glory yeah. of God. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to, to be real intentional about, um, in my life as well. That's awesome. What are you doing? I know you have, how many kids do you have again? Six kids, five Six. girls, one boy. Okay. I, hold, hold on. How I was going to ask you there real quick. Like, what is the Lord giving you? You have a word for the year every year, I, right? I do. Can I, I ask do you what your word is or are you year. saving that for later? I can say it now. I can say it now. So every year I pick a word. I don't do goals because they kind of stress me out. Um, and I don't do resolutions because I kind of have the mentality of if I want to change something, I'm just going to change it. I don't have to wait for the new year. So I just, resolutions stress me out, but I like a word. So a word is just something that I can just focus on a theme um, last year was my Jesus year. So the word was holiness and the Lord definitely did a lot with that. You didn't I, get crucified. Um, I mean, honestly, in certain <laughs> ways, in certain ways I did. I think, um, this past year was really beautiful and, you know, I got to go to like really cool places like Japan and Hawaii and, and Jerusalem Day and, and the Holy, the Land. Holy Land. I mean, it was like a very incredible year. Yeah. It was also the last two months of 2023 were probably one of the worst most challenging times of my life um so that's been hard yeah so but it started so two things um today is my 77th day of daily adoration of going to see jesus every single day which is Ooh. really really cool praise the uh, Lord. like in the middle of challenges just running to adoration because i had nowhere else to go um and nowhere else that i could go and the second thing was my word it started it kind of inspired my word of the year which is illuminate um and i just feel like the lord there's areas of darkness in our lives and the lord has already done a lot of healing in my life mm -hmm. and i feel like the lord's like and now we need to those areas that we've already started opening we're just gonna shed all the light like every single aspect of the frequency that light could bring yeah it's gonna be shed in this area so my word of the year is illuminate and i'm i love it illuminate pretty pumped to see what the lord does with it yeah, yeah you've outlived jesus 34. i know it's my resurrection year now so <laughs> 34 is my resurrection year and i think i'm just gonna go after that like so i'll do resurrection year and then maybe like pentecost year and then like mary into us like in heaven year like we're just gonna just go <laughs> go we're just gonna just give like a a religious theme for every year of my life. So if you have ideas, please comment. Thank you. Yeah, like the monastics year, the crusaders yeah, yeah. year. Yeah, uh, yep. Our Lady of Guadalupe year. It's gonna be epic. It's gonna be epic. So um, but going back to just one more question. I know we have to that'll be up, my theme for eternity in heaven every year. Well, this year, be. Lord. <laughs> but one of the things I was gonna ask you, the with your kids, how are you and your wife being intentional with your with your family? Oh, good question a yeah. oh, humbling question oh how are we how are we not i mean yes and no gosh um 
a lot of ways. I don't, I don't know if I want to list them all, but um, Give me like top I three. think, yeah, top three. So family dinner, mm-hmm. it's not pretty, but it happens. Um, family prayer every night, um, not pretty, but it happens. Um, obviously the big ones, like we go to mass at least on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I usually join the kids. They go to Catholic school, so they go twice a week. I'm always with them on Thursdays. My wife and I also try to do um, a weekly date, like a mandate for me and Jack or a mommy-daughter date with Ange and one of the girls. <clears throat> we just alternate through the kids. That's but awesome. we we try to do that every week. It's usually nothing more than a, f- a fancy breakfast or cup of coffee or Chick-fil-A because that's cherry Coke and my kids think cherry Coke is the greatest thing God ever made. So those are like some kind of very intentional things that kind of just bake into the culture Mm -hmm. of our home. Uh, There's a lot of other things, you know, try to be intentional with the way we prioritize the setup of the house and build a, build a culture there, you know, but there's a lot. Most little things are big things. Yeah. Like I remember the smallest thing my dad and I would go on walks around the block together growing up and we live around the golf course. So we would like try to find golf balls as we walk. And those are some of my favorite memories with my dad. Like it seems so mundane and so simple, but it's beautiful. So those little things are actually big things. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Jack, Jack and I have been walking the dog every night together. And um, it's funny. I mean, the snow drifts in Wisconsin right now are taller than he is. So he's like falling into snowdrifts. My dog's losing tennis balls left and right. Oh, but so and we're not talking about anything deep. Yeah. It's just although he did ask me a good question yesterday. He asked if I was a pro ball, baseball player when mom and I met because I told him we met at a baseball game. So he just assumed I was a pro baseball oh. player, and I oh, the I skirted the issue. I said <laughs> I was in the outfield. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Well, good. Well, Josh, I am so excited to just hear more about what the Lord's doing in your life and to be able to share. If you're listening, if you have a word of the year, um, beautiful, bring it to the Lord and let's see what the Lord's going to do. And if you don't, just strive to get closer to Him this year. I think that's what our goal is, right? Yeah. So we're just going to, we're going to close today with a prayer and then you'll be seeing more of Josh and I in our next episode. Can't wait. And if you want to be a part of this or you have any one to suggest, please reach out to us and we'll be happy to, to hear more and to see what the Lord's going to do in your lives. Yes. Josh, can you lead us in a closing prayer? I can in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. Thank you, Jesus, for inviting us on mission with you. Thank you, Jesus, that you lead us and guide us. You said if we who are evil parents know how to give good gifts to our children how much more will the father send the holy spirit to those who ask him holy spirit we ask that you would live and dwell richly in our hearts it is you that do the heavy lifting help us just to be submissive and eager and expectant that god is working around us since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses we ask for the intercession of all the angels and saints especially our patron saints and our guardian angels. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for listening to the Reach More podcast. We're so excited to see all the things that God has in store for you this year. And we will see you next time on Reach More. May God bless you. And may we just be bold and say yes and not be afraid. Be intentional with the people around us, starting with our families. God bless.